the first building block is create a national body of cotton growing farmers and their FPOs. Now this word FPO, farmer producer organization, people are hearing since the last six months since I've been representing the farmers on this stage. It's not a new phenomena at all. The phenomena is two decades old. The concept was created by the government two decades back, but it has picked up momentum in 2017 onwards when the current government declared incentives for farmer producer organization. Farmer producer organizations are companies like your, your normal companies. They are listed under the Companies Act. They are registered, they are organized, they are semi uh, corporates, they are professional companies of farmers where only farmers can be members. So these are the FPOs, organized farmers and their farmer producer organizations under All India Cotton Farmer Producer Organization Association. This is what we started three years back in 2020, just after lockdown when we understood that um, the farmers were facing an issue and industries were facing a very, very bigger issue of sustainability. So it is an apex body of farmer producer organization across the cotton growing states of India, already 102 other farmer producer organization comprising of nearly one lakh farmers are members right now in this organization. This is guided by a team of experts uh, in um, advisory and technical, many of whom are speakers today, like Chi Suresh Bhai Kotak, um, Dr. Mai was there, Dr. Prasad, we have already invited, C Sircot um, uh, director is, is is in the technical committee and uh, Dr. Keshav Karanti, he is also part of the advisory committee. Such people are, and, and Dr. G. Chandrasekhar, who was going to lead a panel today, is also part of the advisory committee. So guided by expert, this is how we started. We spoke to them, we took their guidance, what is need to be done, which model to follow, and we shortlisted the Amul model, and this is how uh, uh, we have started. You can see the structure. There are farmers, there are self-help groups, there are women groups below. Above that, there is a farmer producer organization. Above that, there is a federation. And above that, there is an association. This is how the structure has evolved in the last few years. Next slide, please. Block number two is a market phase company. Now we know the model of uh, operation, that is the Amul model, but how to do it in agriculture produce? Cotton is not milk. It has a very long supply chain. And we studied the Azim Premji University model. It is a fantastic model of how farmer producers companies can work and grow. And they have strongly suggested a market phase company. One FPO should be made such that it is the federation it, and it knows the market. It deals with the market, it aggregates, it trains, it processes, and it trades also. All farmer producer companies cannot be expected to do that. So we need to have a federation, a group of FPOs who are specifically trained for that purpose. And that was the model. And that is what we built that on. Please return the last slide. And uh, make code of conduct, have dispute um, mechanisms in place, have SOPs to increase the yield and productivity. And uh, I will just share an example in the coming slides, how uh, this uh, productivity model has evolved. The third building block is, First, we created a state body, then a national body. Can we have integration of that national body in, into a supply chain? That is the third, third building block. Uh, spread, spread the knowledge to other states. Train and uh, make leaders out of other state farmer producer organizations so, so that they can be part of the mainstream to make Operation White Gold a success in India, an uh, ever surplus cotton uh, growing country. Building block number four is the most critical part. Please return the last slide. Is participation of the industry. No, the last, still you go back. Building block number four. Yes. Industry is so important. This supply chain will not be complete without the industry, madam. The industry has to participate in and it has to participate for its own benefit. We do not want grants. The farmers are not asking grants. Don't give us any money. Give us contracts. Mm -hmm. Enter into a farming contract, like, like Sri Prabhakaranji said, contract farming before the sowing season that is possible. We will grow cotton of your choice. We will use seeds of your choice. We will give you quality of your choice. But we, there has to be a contract for that. After we grow, you cannot sell that you, 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 you should have done this. So contract farming is one option. Second option is a marketing contract itself just before the harvesting season. If that can be done, this participation will lead to a win-win situation for the producer community, for the uh, 
trading community, for the manufacturing community, as well as for the government. Because in all these cases, we have never asked for a single rupee from anybody. And we are still not asking that. For the government, it must ensure a level playing field so that such contracts happen and such contracts are honored on both the sides. 